Okay, all right, all right, okay. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here. Internet's busiest music nerd, I hope you're doing well. It's time for a weekly track roundup. My feelings, my thoughts on a bunch of songs that have dropped over the past week or so. Whether I loved them or hated them, uh, they are linked down below so you can check them out for yourself. And uh, yeah, down there as well is our Turntable Lab link. We get kickback from it if you buy some records or anything else like that over there on their page check them out you know they're a good retailer uh, we also have our patreon page down below as well if you want to support us and get some cool extra bonus monthly content in the process that's an option as well and uh, yeah let's get straight into the worst tracks of the week we have a couple we have a few they are as follows but bam we have this new one from yeet uh, still counting uh, pretty much sounds like just a straight playboy cardi ripoff with uh, nothing special added whatsoever uh, i have heard some interesting tracks from yeet in the past but i don't feel like this is uh, really one of them this one just sounds kind of too derivative to make much of it you know I, I can't come on here and tell you this is a special track that doesn't sound uh stand out to me in any way and and this one just doesn't frankly um we also have a new one from portugal the man what me worry i was pretty excited given the title the you know mad magazine tie-in and everything i, I am a big mad fan um but with that being said this just kind of sounds like some very bland forgettable uh, modern psych pop pastiche, nothing really special about it. Song doesn't really stand out. I, I think it's one of their weaker singles, frankly. And we have a new one from Everything Everything. The band continues to try to work this balance between writing tracks that uh, vocally and uh, in some cases instrumentally are very eccentric, but also are trying to hand over a pop appeal in terms of like uh, the melodies and the song structure. And I, I, I think they're still not really kind of hitting that balance. The material is just kind of end uh, and ending up still, you know, because I think they've been kind of working this. They've been really trying to like perfect this balancing act for a few records now. And um, I, th I think for the most part, the material is still sounding very shallow and also kind of obnoxious. Uh, whereas if it were adventurous and exciting, you know, the the vocal eccentricities and the elements of the band that are maybe a little off-putting to uh, more, I, I'll say, um, I guess, normie listeners, that sort of thing, uh, you know, it would kind of balance out because, hey, there's some really cool, adventurous, progressive, unique elements to uh, the band's music and sound. But I just feel like that's not really the case, especially uh, with this new track, Bad Friday, sadly. Uh, let's move into the mess section, the tracks that um, I wasn't blown away by, but uh, certainly were still worth a mention. You might enjoy them uh, more than me. They are as follows. Bam, we have a new one from Sharon Van Etten, Porta. Uh, this one kind of sounds like a, a little bit of Bruce Springsteen, the Killers mixed together into a grand 80s rock singer-songwriter anthem. Uh, it's, it's not too bad. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there like this generally, but I will say... Um, I am very happy to hear that Sharon Van Etten's voice works very well for this type of track, for this type of context. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's by no means bad, but it's uh, certainly not one of my favorite tracks in this vein. And it, it, is, it is still cool to kind of hear her attempt this and, uh, you know, pretty much nail the vibe. Uh, we have a new one from uh, Kim Petrus, who has a brand new EP out. The, the track I'd like to point you to, though, is uh, Throat Goat. Um, yeah, it's, uh, quite nasty and full of ridiculous, like, goat and gargling sound effects. <laughs> Still one of the most hilarious and sluttiest pop songs you'll hear this year, uh, without a doubt. Uh, we have a new one from Nicki Minaj and Lil Baby, Bussin'. If you remember, they dropped a single, uh, a, a double build single last week, which was awful. Uh, this new one over here, by comparison, is, is a lot more listenable. I mean, you know, I, I won't say it's the most unique song either of them have ever been on any uh, or anything as it's it's pretty much just a very straightforward trap track very straightforward trap banger but hey in terms of like flow and instrumental and progression it, it's it's way more uh, way more listenable than the last crossover they did uh we have uh, mxm uh, mxm tune with a brand new cut mona lisa if you guys remember uh, the little pump track Mona Lisa that dropped uh, a little while back uh, th this is leagues better a uh, very quaint piece of <laughs> <laughs> like singer songwriter chamber pop that sort of thing um yeah you know it's it's sweet it's lovely on the ears i mean not blown me away or nothing but uh, it's it's certainly pleasant and uh, it's cool to hear a uh, uh tunes music uh, mature and hear the instrumentals get a bit more lavish so uh you know shout out to a uh, 
MXM tune. Uh, we have a new one from Jack White over here on this track. The riffs are gnarly and nasty. Fear of the Dawn is the title of this one. Um, you know, this one could grow on me as I listen to it more in here in the context of the record. The heaviness of it, the distortion of it uh, reminds me of that uh, track he had a Call of Duty tie-in with that's on the upcoming record that I wasn't too crazy about. But I feel like the uh, straightforward, just kind of uh, balls to the wall, fast and uh, very unapologetic pacing and just... Just kind of speed of this track is a lot more fun. Just kind of reminds me of like older White Stripe stuff, but a lot heavier and a lot more distorted. Uh, we have a new one from Foles, 2 a.m. Um, pretty straightforward and enjoyable, groovy piece of pop rock. Nothing uh, uh, too bad from Foles over here on this one. New record should be out soon. We have a Father John Misty, Q4, our second taste of the forthcoming record. I wasn't too crazy about this one. This one to me felt like a very... 60s era piece of you know chamber pop um and uh you know I, I think it's just kind of okay i think vocally he under delivers a little bit on this one and the hook didn't really stand out to me in any way uh for sure instrumentally it's lavish and uh, uh the production for the most part sounds very pretty but i i just don't think it's his strongest song in my opinion but you know maybe something that'll hit me a little bit harder when i hear the entire record uh we have this new one from five yo four in City of Gods, Kanye West and Alicia Keys on the track. Five Yo's great. Instrumental is pretty impressive as it is, sure, like a drill track, but it's trying to do something really anthemic with the keys and especially Alicia Keys on the chorus. I will say the, uh, the, the, the pacing is a bit off, though, like around the midriff, when Alicia Keys kind of extends the chorus, it does start to lose a momentum. And then there's Kanye's feature, which... It's kind of a mess. I mean, there are a few bars that stand out for sure, but the flow isn't really there. And there's just a lot of shit that he says on the track where you, you really have to buy into the Kanye delusion to, I think, get down with a lot of what he's saying in terms of like trying to frame his current mental state and everything that's been going on around him drama wise. And of course, you know, post the release of this track, he's had a, a very dramatic weekend lashing out at just about everyone on Instagram. Um, so yeah, I, I think Kanye is just not really in a great place right now. Um, you know, doesn't really have his head straight on his shoulders. And, um, I feel like this verse is indicative of that. His IG meltdown is indicative of that. I, I just don't think he's like in the best place right now. Maybe take a break. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Well, there you go. And we have a Doja Cat covering Hole's celebrity skin uh, pretty much by the numbers. I mean, she even does her vocally little Courtney Love impression, which is mostly uh, there. Um, I can't say it's amazing, but I can't really say it's bad either because she sticks to the blueprint of the original song so closely. Just pretty much sounds identical to the <laughs> original song in many respects. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's OK. I mean, I hope that, uh, you know, uh, she turned some of her fans onto like whole. That would certainly be cool. Uh, and let's move on to the best tracks of the week. We have a few. We have a couple. They are as follows. Uh, we have this one over here from a rapper that I've just been turned on to, uh, Wesley Joseph, Cold Summer. Man, this thing is melodic. It's deep. It's dark. It's kind of a cerebral and mesmerizing. Uh, this song is pretty cool. Cold Summer. Check it out. It's nice. It's heavy. Uh, we have this new one from uh, Snoop Dogg over here who has a new record out now. Also, you know, pretty amazing announcement that he uh, now owns Death Row Records. So amazing that uh, Snoop Dogg was able to uh, financially, um, you know, uh, 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 sort of make that happen. Uh, Kripya Enthusiasm is the track over here I'd like to point you to. It's fun, it's smooth, and it samples the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme song. <laughs> Check it out. It's it's hilarious. Uh, we have this new one over here from Orville Peck looking like the final boss of Cowboys over here. <laughs> I haven't been a huge Orville fan in the past because uh, mostly I felt like his vocal performances were very much lacking. But uh, on this new track, that was absolutely not uh, the case at all. Come on, baby, cry. Um, I think he totally kills it on the vocal front on this end, honestly, um, uh, on this track, I, I want to say. Uh, it's got, you know, nice kind of 70s rhinestone cowboy throwback sort of feel to it. I haven't heard the other teasers to his forthcoming record yet, but uh, this one for sure is is a great standout. All right, we have uh, Obang JR over here. Try is the track. You might remember him from uh, 
uh, features as of late with artists like Lil Sims and that sort of thing. Uh, but hey, you know, he's got a record coming out this year as well. This track, Try, again, is, I think, a great uh, taster, a great sampling. Give it a shot. We have uh, over here uh, this new one from Casey and Gustafelstein. Uh, okay. Um, you know, th this track stylistically, vocally anyway, has a lot of similarities with like stuff that Cardi does. But then you have Gustafelstein, Gustafelstein on the production with totally like drumless beat, all of these heavy synthesizers. It's like really dystopian and maybe a little deconstructed as well. It's strange. Like it's a weird combination of styles and sounds going on on this track. But I absolutely fucking love with it. I think I, I absolutely love it. I think it's nuts. I think it's insane. I think this track is bold as fuck. And pretty much just insane, uh, really messing with it. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, most likely we're never going to hear another song like this ever again, <laughs> at least from these two, because, you know, crossovers like this only seem to happen uh, every once in a while. But I, I think this is a, a very interesting one, a very cool one. All right, let's move on from there. Our next one is uh, we live in a fucking society, everybody. Ed Sheeran, the Joker and the Queen. If you guys remember my recent Ed Sheeran review of uh, you know his, his last record, Equals, um, you may remember that The Joker and the Queen is one of the only tracks off that record that I like. Uh, I think it's quite a good ballad. And it seems now The Joker has found his queen with a Taylor Swift in the mix on uh, just a remix of the song that, uh, yeah, it has Taylor on it. And uh, I mean, they've collaborated before, I think, vocally and stylistically they complement each other really well and uh i think taylor effectively was a good addition to this track so uh so yeah you know why so serious joker and the queen there you go all right we have uh ebay coming through with a new track sister to sister where, where uh forever everybody was uh <laughs> Never been confused about the pronunciation of their name. There's a whole section of the track where they sort of announce the pronunciation of their duo, which I thought was pretty funny. But uh, but yeah, this is a really uh, fun, uplifting, and uh, groovy little track about sisterhood, sister love, sister appreciation. I'm digging the vibes. Um, yeah, it's a really good track. It's another uh, great taster of this uh, forthcoming record. The Shakira reference as well I thought was uh, uh, very cheeky and fun. A uh, good cut. Good cut from EBA. All right, we have a new one from over here from Harvey Sutherland with Dame Funk in the mix. A Feeling of Love is the uh, uh, title of this one. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a nice synth funk uh, throwback. Uh, very fun, very cool. Dame Funk always brings this, you know, classic sort of vibe in all of his stuff. I think that's especially the case with this track. Some of the chord changes on this song are amazing too. Give it a listen. Give it a shot. It's really good. All right, we have, uh, and finally, I think uh, Caroline Polachek over here. Billions is the title of this one. Man, I'm digging this so much more than Bunny is a Rider, like good progression. Love the group vocals on the finish. Chorus is strong as well. Good forward-thinking pop track from Caroline. Uh, this has got me, you know, a bit more psyched up for uh, uh, her album cycle this year. And uh, yeah, looking forward, looking forward for sure. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, everything I wanted to point your guys' way in the song realm this week hopefully you got a good recommendation or two out of this video let me know once more everything i talked about link down below whether i liked it or not and uh yeah let me know what some of your favorite tracks were this week over here next to my head another video that you could check out hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel anthony fantano weekly tracks of forever <laughs>